Hello and welcome to another video from the Brush and Bolt Gun. This time we've got something a little bit different. First of all I'm going to do a bit of a review and then a bit of a demonstration about some uh, particular items. And what I want to talk about today is storage. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but for my hobby I've got loads of different tools and paints and glues and all sorts of things. As well as plenty of models that I'm working on at any one time. Uh, I tend to go from one project to another without maybe finishing everything in one go. So, when it comes to storage, it's quite hard to, to find something to, to keep all my paints and models in. Uh, so recently I bought some stuff from a company called Hobby Zone in Poland, and uh, I just wanted to show you uh, what they have, and also really sort of demonstrate to you how useful it is, but also how easy it is to put together. So, first of all, I've got something uh, that I've already built, a bit of a uh, BBC moment, where here's one I made earlier. So as you can see, this one is a kind of base unit, it's a nice rectangle made out of laser cut uh, MDF or wood, I'm not quite sure which. Um, and this one is a kitchen roll holder, which I thought would be quite useful for having by my airbrush station so that I could uh, use that to, to clean up and uh, test and mix any paints that I'm using at the time. So you can see there it's quite a nice unit. Um, and it's got this flap here and a bit of balsa wood in the middle that the kitchen roll hangs on so I can pull it out and pull off a nice sheet of kitchen roll there. Now these units are really easy to put together so I'm just going to demonstrate how to put one together and then show you how I've organised uh, my storage. So if I just grab this, so this is a box as you can see there from Hobby Zone in Poland and it comes in a nice little flat pack box there a bit like a certain Swedish company and if I just get my hobby knife here you can see that I just cut this open it's probably best if you cut away from me uh, as if you've seen any of my other videos I often talk about how uh, dangerous these kind of hobby knives are so put that away now that I've opened this and if I just open this up you'll see that there's some nice bubble wrap pretty layers of bubble wrap protecting the wooden units inside first thing you notice is an instruction sheet so I'll just show that to the camera there um, now I probably guess this is translated from Poland but unlike a lot of companies it actually it reads pretty well and it's quite easy to follow. So you see one side here, it shows you what the finished unit should look like. And it has both English and Polish instructions there. And then the other side is a kind of step-by-step -step guide showing you what part is number one uh, and then part number two and how you should glue them together and what order you should glue them together. You'll also notice on this side here that there is a little bit of explanation about these, which are the magnets that come contained with each of these units. So because it's stackable and it's modular, you can stack them together, but to make sure that things don't fall over and that they stack neatly together, they use these magnets. What I, get, what I do is I'll leave them to the end once I've made all the units and so I can be sure that the um, polarity of the magnet is correct for each unit and that they stack and I can move them around to where I like them. So I'm just going to put those to one side for now and have a look at what we get in the box here. So this is one first bit of wood and you can see precision cut there, nice clean, there's not any sawdust or anything in the box, it comes out nice. And that would be the shelf in the middle of this unit. This unit is a, um, uh, a work in progress shelf to show uh, models and miniatures that I'm working on at the moment. So just put that to one side. If you go back to the instructions, the piece I'm looking for is, let's see that was part number one. I'm looking for part two now, the side pieces to go alongside that. So handily in the box, these are my next pieces. The thing to look out for and be careful of, if you see here, there is a hole in this, only on one side. These holes here are for magnets and this slot here is for the shelf to slot into. 
you need to make sure that if there's anything like this, that it goes in the correct place. So just be a bit careful. Check out all your pieces first so you know that they're, how they're going together before you continue. This particular hole here is for a piece of perspex. If I just get out of the box, that goes at the front of the unit. So you can see here, it goes at the front of the unit, and there's little uh, pivots on the side, and that will allow me to open up that, put models inside, and then close it again. Okay. So I want to make sure that those holes that I was talking about are on the front. So I'll just put that to one side, and if I get both these side pieces out, I can start assembling. So to do this, what you'll want is something like this. So this is just a, a tub of PVA glue or wood glue. It's the same thing. Um, and this is a nice one because it's high bond strength and it dries fairly quickly. Some wood glues and some PVAs can take a long time to, to glue, but that's fine if you don't mind waiting. Uh, something from a pound shop or, or a discount store, you can get all sorts of hobby and craft PVA glue. Don't spend a lot of money on this because they're all essentially the same product. Moving on, uh, we will get the shelf again. Okay, so I just cleared my work area here and I've got the two side pieces. So there's one and here's another one. And I just want to make sure again that this hole that I pointed out is at the front of the box. So if this is the shelf, this is going to be one side, and then I'll make sure the other one is that side. Now to keep this as clean as possible, I'm going to take some time, and I'm just going to... Uh, another thing I should say about this PVA is it's got a nice applicator, so I can just squeeze this, and then just put the glue on the two joining bits there. As you can see, I've got glue there, and that's probably as much as it needs. So I just pick up this piece, and I'll just slot that in there. Okay. Now what I'll do, just to make sure that it glues straight, is just hold that down to the surface. And I've got here a nice handy J cloth that I've just dampened. Because PVA glue is water soluble, I can just run this along with a finger and clean off any excess glue that I may have there. Okay. And then that makes sure it looks nice as well as goes together properly. And I'll just do the same with the other side. Okay, so now as you see in front of me, I've got part of the assembled box. Um, now this is a little bit fragile in that it might not glue at 100% uh, perpendicular angle. So what I probably want to do next before allowing this to dry is to fit in the top and bottom pieces. So if I go back to my instructions, I can see that they are pieces number three. Both the top and the bottom are the same piece. You can see here two pieces of wood that have a groove in the side and two holes for the magnets. This is the first one, and this is the second one. Because of the way this has been designed, it really doesn't matter which one goes on the top and which one goes on the bottom, so it makes it nice and easy to arrange. Okay, so as you can see now, I've got the top and the bottom pieces in there. You can see maybe a bit of a water stain here, but don't worry, that'll dry up um, and it'll look fine once it's dry. So I could leave it to dry at that stage and then finish off the other bits later. I think it's probably best um, because I haven't really dry fitted things and it's a little bit pliable at the moment, so I can finish off uh, assembling the rest of the kit. So the next piece we're looking for is the back plate. Okay. So we don't want uh, the models to fall off the back. So you can see the front here has got this kind of arc shelf 
And if I put miniatures in here, and for whatever reason they get not, they're going to fall out the back. Uh, so we get a nice handy back plate to glue onto there, which also looks nice. It's not a nice white finish. So what I'll do is I'll just glue around the sides. Now, because I don't want this to glue to the table when I do it, I'm just going to glue the sides and the top, and that should give it enough of a bond to stick to the rest of the box. Okay, so now you can see that I've put the back plate on there. One thing I should point out is that there's a bit of a bow in this back plate along here. You might not be able to see it in the camera. But in order to make sure that glue is properly, I'm just going to now lie it on its back. The last thing I need to do is to put in the perspex. Make sure that you take off the plastic coating, because that's just to keep it nice in the box. Um, once it's in, it will be harder to remove. And you want it to be nice and clear, clear perspex, so that you can see your miniatures inside. The other thing to check is to make sure you get this around the right way. Now it's got a nice little Hobby Zone logo in the front there, which is difficult to see on the camera, but if I just tilt it like that, the light reflects off it. So that's Hobby Zone's logo, and that's designed to be at the right hand side. So if I just put that in there. Now this should be able to bend but because the glue is still drying I can just pull off one side a little bit and then push that back. It might look like it covers the whole opening but it's nice and easy to just, once it's glued, push in at the top and then lift that up and you can put your miniatures on the shelves. So that's how one of those go together, and I'm just going to put that to one side for now so that it has a chance to dry and dry properly. And I'm just going to open up another box and show you a slightly different storage system. So again, this is by Hobby Zone. If I just open this up, again you'll see a nice uh, bubble wrap another instruction sheet and this one is for a tiered paint rack system and as you can see here we have some nice white layered wood in order to form those tiers and this goes together in a very similar way to the box that I've just shown you so I won't demonstrate that for now but if you have any questions then please do ask in the comment section below so I'll put that aside for now and let's have a look at uh, some storage I've already put together. So as you can see here, here's an example of another work in process um, shelf unit and then above that I've got one of the tiered paint displays and you can see you can get different sizes so the Vallejo ones fit in this smaller size hole here and they stay in place quite nicely, they don't fall out and any Forge World or Citadel or even Tamiya, if I get a Tamiya, I can show you that. Just fit on the nice shelf at the top there, and again, they're nice and secure and don't fall out. And as you can see, because it's modular, they sit on top of each other. So I could, if I wanted to, put another corner shelf on top of this one and lift the paint rack up by a bit. So what I'll do is I'll put my uh, kitchen roll holder back in there and you can see that that fits together nicely and I could put another paint rack on top of there and extend this system back as far as these other plug sockets here and have plenty of storage there you can see I could fit some tanks into, uh, into the corner shelf there and as you can see here I've collected up all the magnets and if I just use a hammer, I can tap those into place and make sure that the polarity is all in the right order. So thank you for watching. If you've got any comments, then please comment below. And if you like the video, make sure you like it and please subscribe to see our future videos. Thank you.